We're going to be covering a lot of new stuff in this chapter, so buckle up and let's dive in. In a new Spark project, we're going to drag in some assets. So we have a fragment FBX. You probably remember that from before. Then we have a bunch of textures. We have the frosty one that we made before, and then I went ahead and made a sandy one for this chapter. And then there's an emission channel here. I also have this shockwave animation, which I rendered out of a different program. And that will import, but we have to do something a little bit differently to import that. I'm going to add an animation sequence. And I'll rename this to Anim Shockwave. And I always save before I import an image sequence because a lot of times I have trouble, at least in Windows, when importing those. So it's always good to save just in case. Now with that selected, I'll choose File. And I'll make sure to grab the correct sequence. And it looks like I am having that same issue where nothing happens and it kind of freezes up. So what I've found that solves this is pressing Control Shift Escape, and that brings up this task manager. And then in the Spark program, under the File Dialog binary, if you right click and end task, that will magically bring up this little import window. And from here, I usually have pretty good luck importing. Now I just need to navigate back to the correct folder. Then select all and open. And you can tell when it's thinking because the video over here will freeze. And it looks like that worked. Now we can select this and turn off compression since these are already compressed. And the same for all of these, just disable compression. So now we have our 3D object, a bunch of textures and an image sequence, and then the animation sequence that controls this texture. So first let's set up the material for this fragment. So we'll go add asset, new material. We'll name this matte frost fragment. And there's a default material in here. You can just delete that, or you could have used that in the first place. So with this fragment, I'll assign the frost fragment. Go inside, change it to physically based. And we'll assign all the frost textures that we imported. So in texture, we'll grab the frost color. In ORM, we'll grab the frost ORM, and then the frost normal. And with the ORM, make sure that those are turned up. Then in emission, we'll grab the emission channel. And for now, we'll just choose kind of a random blue color. We'll be changing that around later. And then for the environment, let's turn that on grab something from the library. I think for this one, Sunrise will do. And Sunrise might be a bit dark, but if you rotate it around, oh, for some reason, it looks like it didn't apply here. There we go. Still though, if you want to rotate it around, you can get the shinier side on the front where the sun is. To get that nice reflection. Although maybe it's a little too bright when it's dead on, so I'll just scoot it over a little bit more. There we go, that looks nice. And if it's looking too shiny or too metallic, you can always turn down this metallic and get it more back to a flat material. But I'm just gonna keep this all the way up. Maybe 90%. Okay. So now we want to duplicate this because we want kind of a mirrored version of this. So we'll grab the fragment, hit Control D to duplicate. And then we'll go inside and we're going to reverse the scale on the mesh inside of the model along the X axis. So we'll just type negative one here and that'll flip it. But now you can see we only see kind of the back faces, not the front faces. And that's because when we 
invert the scale, it kind of flips the normals, so the normals are pointed inside. So to fix this, first we're going to duplicate this material anyway. And this will be our sand fragment. And while we're here, let's change these from the frost materials or textures to the sand ones. So this will be a sand color, sand ORM. The emission is the same for both. And the normal map will be sand normal. And then for coal mode, we'll change it from back to front. And then we just need to assign it to this object. So now we have our frosty side and our sandy side. And then we have the emission coming through as these little hieroglyphics. Now we don't need to be looking at my face this whole time, so let's change this to this white thumbnail here. That will just hide this display. And I'm also going to hide some of this stuff here. So I'm going to say none in this filter, and then only turn on the camera, just so it's nice and clean and this is the only area we're really worried about. Now, obviously these are both too big, so let's grab both of them, hit T to scale, and just scale that down just so they fit in there. And it looks like the light's a little hot right here. We're clipping out. So let's see what these two lights are doing. Let's just disable the ambient and the directional. It looks like that fixes that. Now we're just relying on the environment map for all the lighting, which looks really nice. Get these nice reflections in there. So let's just delete these lights. We can add them back later if we want them. Actually, so we can see this in context a little better. Instead of using this white environment, I scroll down and use this grassy field. And I believe this is available in the Spark installation folder. There's a few kind of default videos there. So this just puts it with a nicer background. Okay, so now let's add some interactivity. I'm gonna open up the patch editor. And we're gonna be doing a few different things here. First, let's right click in the focal distance and add a null. And we'll just call this shake null. And I'll rename these two fragments. We have frost. and sand. Now take both of those and drop them inside the shake null. That way we can animate this null and that'll move both of them. We can also animate each of these independently. So for the shake null, we want to control the position with patches. So let's click that. And the goal here is to add a screen pinch patch. So the user will pinch their fingers together and that will bring these two pieces together. They'll start further apart and they'll move together. And as they get closer, this whole thing will shake more and more. So first let's add a pinch. And the pinch has two outputs. The gesture state means I think it's currently being pinched and then the scale is what we'll be using. And I believe by default this starts at one Maybe when we hook stuff up, we'll see this value change. And the best way to utilize this is to use a transition patch. So we'll take the scale and add a transition. And for the pinching part, we're actually gonna be animating the frost and sand fragment positions. So let's grab those as well. And we'll do the shaking later. So we have the sand and the frost. Now you can see the scale is set to one, which I think is default. And if we switch this to simulate touch by holding alt or option, you can see it mirrors my little touch circle there. And as I pinch in, you can see this value change in here. So that gets closer and closer to zero. And if I reset, it's back at one. So by default, this scale starts at one and one is gonna be the end value. So as we approach zero, it will go back to the start. So it feels a little bit backwards, but the end is the start and vice versa. So we want the end to be at zero, 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 and the beginning to be the Y and the Z are gonna be zero. 
and then the x will be maybe negative 0.1. And let's just plug it into one of these and see. Maybe this one. Okay. So the frost fragment moves back. Maybe that's almost a little too far. 0 0.08. Yeah, I think that might work. And for the sand fragment, we want it to push out the opposite way. So I believe we can use a negate. And that should flip this around. So as we pinch together, these two will get closer and closer to zero. And it appears that you can see this value here is 0 0.00001. So as I'm pinching, it moves pretty quickly right away. And as it gets closer to zero, it kind of is like this exponential curve, I guess. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to animate things with this screen pinch. It seems to get a little slower as you approach zero. Actually, what I think it's doing is it's using the proportion of how much pinch you have left. So if I pinch here, we can get pretty close to zero, it looks like. But then here again, it's just taking that remainder little sliver and this entire pinch is only delivering that little sliver. So I think that's why it feels exponential. Anyway, so we have this functionality set up. Now we want both of these to shake more and more as they get closer together. And we'll just be shaking this one null. And there's probably a lot of different ways to do this, but I think if we loop the animation of the x, y, and z values independently, we can get kind of a randomized shaking. So let's add a few transition patches. We're going to add three of them. And we can keep them as vector three. We'll just change all these values to zero to start. And the way we're going to build this is we're going to use this scale set into a loop animation. So right now, by default, this starts at one. So this will loop once every second. And then as we pinch down, this value will get smaller. So the loop will go faster and faster. So that will make the kind of cycle of this animation go faster and faster. And as you can see, as I was duplicating these transition patches, it duplicated whatever I had selected in the scene as well, which is a really annoying little bug, but just need to delete those. So for starters, let's just put the progress in each of these. So these are all looping at the same interval. And let's start with negative 0 0.02 here, and then positive 0 0.02 here. And we're gonna add all of these together. So I'll just add some add patches right now. So this, each of these patches will be just the X, just the Y, and just the Z. And then adding these will just combine everything. And then we'll plug that into the position of the shake null. So right now you can see the X animation is working and Obviously it's jumping back because we don't have mirrored selected. So we'll turn that on. So now these are looping backwards and forward. And obviously they're a little stiff. So let's change it from linear to maybe just quadratic in and out. And we'll do this for all three. So that smooths that out. Now if we take these negative 0 0.02 values, put them in the Y and the Z, and then 0 0.02 in the Y and Z down here. So now we're moving in all three axes, but still it's only moving linearly because this loop animation is exactly the same in all of these. So when you add all these up, they're only gonna be in that one line. So to alleviate that, we need to change this value. So for the scale, let's add a multiply patch and we'll have one for each of these three patches. And then we'll have a unique loop animation for each of these as well. And it looks like it stuck the input into enable, which is not correct. We want it in duration. 
and then we'll plug these in. So each path has its own whole set of values. So if we multiply this one by just a standard one, it's probably okay, because this will be the base. But if we change all of these, and we make sure mirrored's on for all of them, now we have this kind of randomized looping animation, and it does kind of have a, a regular pattern to it, because I think maybe changing these values more might help that. So now, just with these few patches, we've kind of added an organic wiggle to this. And now as we pinch this together, this value will get smaller. And so this loop animation duration will also get smaller. So in theory, that'll make this go faster and faster. So let's test this. And obviously it gets really crazy when you get close to zero, but that's what we want. So that's looking pretty awesome already. And if you wanted to, as you pinch these together, you could also make these values smaller by inputting a few patches into this start and end. So you could control these values to get smaller as this pinch gets smaller. That's up to you, but that would make this part of it a little bit smoother. So that's it for the screen pinch part of this.